Okay, so today we're gonna work a little bit backwards and we're gonna be writing equations of sine and cosine when we're given the graph. So what happened in the last lessons that we've done is that I've given you the equation and asked you to make the graph happen and analyze the key features. And now we're gonna work the other way around. I'm gonna give you the graph, you're gonna analyze the key features and then write the equation. So here's our first problem for today. Um, and I know there's like fill in the blanks on the side of your paper, but we're gonna follow a literal pattern that's gonna make our lives easy. So that dance move that you guys do, the dab, we're gonna do a dab. Then we'll do a little triggy and pick our trig function. And from there, we'll find our C value. So <clears throat> to do this dab, let's start out. And I'm going to put a color dot. I'm going to do the blue for the D. The D is, and we're at one more thing. We have the equation Y equals A. I'm going to write trig because it could be either trig equation. B, X minus C plus D. So this D at the end right here, it's the vertical shift. And it's the line that cuts the graph in half horizontally. So if you go to your graph, this line cuts my graph in half horizontally, and it was at the y value of two. This is a y value thing, so we're gonna put a two here next to my d. The other thing I wanna look at, I'm gonna stay in the blue family. Nope, we're just gonna keep with blue, because they're y things, is the a value. The a value is my amplitude and it's the up and down from D. So how high up does the hill go from D, from that blue line that I drew, the horizontal line, or how low does it go down to the valley from the blue line? So I'm looking at this distance and this distance and this distance. Just be very careful on this problem that you read your scale because there's multiple hash marks, but there's um, a hash mark and then another one that says one. So each hash mark on the y-axis is by a half. So this is a half, one, one and a half, two. So this physical distance here is a two. So my A value, my amplitude, how high and low I go from the middle is also a two. Now let's look at my B value. This B value is the, oops, sorry, that's a highlighter. That B value is going to be the effect of the change on my period. So period is from similar point to similar point, but you must complete a full cycle. So I'm gonna use this top of my hill to this top of my hill, and the direction at the top of the page so that each one of these squares on the x-axis was a pi over four. So I'm gonna count one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four, oops, eight pi over four, nine pi over four, 10 by four, pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, 12 pi over 4. So my period equals 12 pi over 4s, which is the same thing as 3 pi, because twelve go, or 4 goes into 12 three times. So I'm going to use this information and the little formula to calculate my B value. So what I'm going to do is, moving everything a little bit, so I'm going to say that 2 pi over b had to equal my period. In our case, the period was 3 pi, so we just counted out. So I'm going to solve 2 pi over b equals 3 pi over 1, and I'm going to cross multiply. So 2 pi equals 3 pi b. These pi's are going to cancel out, and you're going to get that 2 thirds equals your b value. So over here, I'm going to put 2 thirds. So we can write a sine or a cosine equation for our graphs. I'm going to pick the easier one to start with, and then I'll explain the other one. So when you think about your trig functions, sine is the one that starts in the middle, and what I mean in the middle is that it goes up and then down, up and down. So it's starting in the middle. Oops. 
cosine, however, starts up at the top and then goes down, up, down, up. So we, we go look at the y-axis, and on the y-axis, I have a middle point. Not a min, not a max, but a middle, which means that my sine equation here is going to be easier because it starts at a middle. So if you think about sine, sine usually starts here, and then it goes up. This one goes down. So first thing we're going to write down is my trig was sine. And because this one went down, instead of going up, that means I must have vertically reflected it. So that means my amplitude has to be negative. However, the easy part of this is that because I started a middle point, I don't need to shift it left or right. I don't need to have a C value. There is no C value. Because the point that I want is exactly on the Y axis. So now that we have all of this put together, I'm just going to shrink down what I wrote. Oops. And I'm going to write my trig equation just by putting together what we have. So we wrote a sign. So y equals our, oops, I'm going to go back really quick. I put this negative in the wrong spot. Oh, now I can't cross it off. Let me do this. Let me cross this off. I just meant to put this negative on this too. The amplitude's negative, not the d value. So sorry, guys. Okay. So our amplitude is a negative 2, and then we said sine was our trig function. Open that parenthesis up. Our b value was 2 thirds. X, um, we didn't have a c value, so we can close both those parentheses and then a plus 2. So there's our sine equation. So we're going to do the same thing on the next page, um, but I'm going to show you how to use the c value and write a cosine equation. Does it look horrible? Does that look horrible? Mm -mm. There are a whole bunch of mistakes. No, the only thing I was wondering just to check is the last one. It's like a quarter, right? I don't know. I honestly like haven't done any of it. Because the mark, like there's no mark, and it's kind of in between. I didn't guess that it's it's a quarter or. In Give me one second. Let me finish this eight. equation, and I'll look okay at it. Okay, so what I've done is I copied the stuff from the last page pretty much. Um, the D, A, and the B don't change. They're the same as they were for the sine function. We said this time we're going to pick cosine. And so what I've done is I've marked on my y-axis this point. So I just want to think for a second about the cosine graph. Cosine's parent function starts at a maximum and then goes down and up, down and up. So I need to have one of these maximums that I'm putting a star or an X on. That's what I needed to have on the um, y-axis. So if I count one, oops, one, two, three, this graph is three pi over fours to the left. That maximum, if it had been on the y-axis, it would have been easier to write a cosine. So that means, so three pi over four to the left. Well, that left thing means, really, I have a negative 3 pi over 4. So now I can write my equation. y equals, and this time my amplitude's positive because I'm putting my maximum on the axis. So I have my positive 2 cosine 2 thirds x. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to close those. 2 thirds x, and this time I'm going to put my c value in there. So a, a minus minus would have made this a plus 3 pi over 4. And on the outside, I have my plus d. So we can write sine and cosine equations for both, or for any wave that we're given, because sine and cosine look very, very similar. So let's try another one. So here's our next graph. And so we're going to do our dab. So for D, you find the middle line, the horizontal that cuts the graph in half, which is right there, which is negative 1. From there, I go up a square, down a square, up a square. But keep in mind, the squares on this graph are a half, so my A value is going to be a half. And for my B value, I need to count from similar point to similar point. So like from this one 
to this one. So let's count those squares. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 12 pi over 4 equals 3 pi. And so then remember 2 pi over b is my period and 3 pi is what my period was that I counted out. So this is the same as the last problem. You can cross multiply and get 3 pi b equals 2 pi. Those pi's will cancel out. So you're gonna end up with b equaling 2 thirds. So then we're gonna have two different schools of thought. We're gonna have a sine and our cosine. So I'm gonna do the sine, oops sign is going to be my orange. So right here um, on the y-axis I have a minimum. So for sine I need it to be a middle point. So a point where my graph crosses my horizontal like right here or right here because that's a middle point. I'm going to take this one because after my middle point I want my sine graph to go up. Otherwise, if I had picked the other one, I would have had, had to make the amplitude negative. So this piece is 1, 2, 3 pi over 4 to the right. So for this one, my C value was 3 pi over 4 to the right. So when I write this equation, Y equals, my A is going to be 1 half, sine 2 thirds, X minus, remember it's a girl thing, so it's backwards. So if I went to the right, it's going to be a minus, 3 pi over 4, and then minus 1. What you'll notice when you do this is that one of them has what we call a phase shift and one of them does not have a phase shift. The phase shift is that C value. So since sine had the phase shift, my cosine should not have a phase shift. So right here, again on the y-axis, I have a minimum. Well, cosine, if you remember, it doesn't start at a minute, it starts at a max, and then it goes down. So that means no C value, but you have to make your A, your amplitude, equal a negative. So when I go to write this equation, I'm going to write y equals negative one-half cosine two-thirds x minus one. Okay, we're going to do one more example. Okay, so the last example. So again, we're going to dab first. So for my D, it's that line that cuts the graph in half horizontally, which for us was negative 2. My amplitude is how high or low you go from that. So if, remember this graph, the scale's by halves, so it's a half. My B value is my period. This one's a little bit trickier um, because the hills and valleys are in the middle of the squares, but that's okay. We can still do this. So here's the middle. And here's another hill. So I'm going to count. So if you think about it, one square was pi over 4, and that's in the middle, so it's pi over 8. Um, I'm going to go back and count that in a second. So this square right here is 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4s, 4 pi over 4s, 5 pi over 4s. So right now I have 5 pi over 4s. But then this is 1 eighth here, and then this piece over here was 2 eighths. So I don't really have 5 pi over 4, I have 6 pi over 4, because an eighth and an eighth makes a fourth. So my period, my physical period, is 6 pi over 4. So that simplifies into 3 pi over 2. Remember that my period equals 2 pi over b, so my period was 3 pi over 2. I'm going to cross multiply with a butterfly, and you get 4 pi equals 3 pi b, so your B value should equal 3 fourths when you simplify. And then you have to do your two separate trig equations. We'll do sine and we'll do cosine. Keep sine orange. So on my y-axis, I have a middle point, which means sine is going to be easier. But sine is supposed to go up and this one goes down. So that means my amplitude is negative but no C value. So my equation for sine is gonna be y equals, 
one half, but it said make my amplitude negative, so put a negative in front of your one half. Sine three fourths x minus two. For my cosine friend over here, I start in the middle, but I will need to start at a max. So that max right there is a pi over four and then a pi over eight. So I had a pi over four plus a pi over eight, which equals two pi over eight plus pi over eight, which is three pi over eight to the left. This graph moves three pi over eight to the left. So y equals, my amplitude gets to be positive this time because I start at a max back on the axis, cosine three over four x plus three pi over eight and then minus your two on the outside. So now it's your turn to try. You're gonna to go to the next page in your notes and you're going to try the problems that are there. Um, please note that they want you to write two equations, one with a phase shift and one without, AKA a sine and a cosine. And please note the axes change. So note the axes before you do the problems.